to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, wi fis Welcome back to yet another underground <laughs> and under renovation episode of the Wireless Woman. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. And if you haven't already, first of all, why? Why? What's the problem? What's good? Go ahead and subscribe to this channel. <laughs> And click the bell for notifications of when I go live and when I upload new content. Um, this is a side note. If you want to see my live episodes, they are under the live tab on my channel. I don't re-upload lives to my videos like feed. They stay over on the live side. So you do actually have to go underneath the live tab to see lives when you miss them. And I am going to be scheduling some lives. So yeah, you need that notification bell to even know that they're there and when they're coming. If you're not underneath that live tab to go check it out. So go ahead and click that bell for notifications of when I go live and when I upload new content like this. So I was watching a video that I shouldn't have. I have tried my best to not interest my way out of all menospheric content, but somehow, somehow someone makes a new channel that hasn't quite yet found its niche, and then it ends up coming up into my feed, sneaking that little menospheric content up into my feeds, and then I run across a video like this. So we're going to watch it and react to it because I do think it's a topic that we as women, who I'm always talking to over here on this channel, should be talking about and discussing because the manosphere has become dangerous. They're gaslighting us. They're blame shifting a lot of problems of the patriarchy onto women. And we have to be, as the Bible says, cunning as a serpent. We have to be aware of their devices and blame shifting will have you trying to fix something that baby ain't even your problem. So let's take a look. Why women have changed is because of feminism. Women earn their own money. They don't need men anymore. Well, guess what? If I don't need a man, I only want a man. And if you only want a man, what kind of man are you going to want? So um, women don't need a man anymore. There's a lot of women who still do. And some of these men who are worried about it need to find them. Uh, they give us a lot of talk about the type of competition that we're in for men. But I'm hearing men say as he will say in this video, that they can't find women. So I'm going to need y'all to get out your handy dandy notebook and start looking for the women that that still desperately need men so you don't have to have this complaint. But women not needing men and only wanting men gives men the opportunity to be the people that they've been getting on these podcasts saying that they want to be. Because when a woman needs a man... Then it's all about, oh, she only wants me for my money. Oh, she only wants me, you know, to provide for her. And, you know, would she really pick me just on the basis of my character attributes if she didn't need me? Well, now we all get to find that out. And men get to develop those softer skills. They get to develop the, the soft skills of communication and uh, not necessarily just be the workhorse, you know, like women, men now have the option to stay at home with children and families. If those are the value systems that they value, they can now become stay at home fathers. You know, they can uh, take up uh, their their kids activities and things like that. So there's been a greater amount of flexibility that have been given to men as a result of this feminism. Uh, which really isn't feminism at all. Women started working in the 1930s and 40s because men were sent away to war <laughs> to fight World Wars One and Two, and women were relegated, forced to work because we have this thing in our country called GDP, uh, GNP, gross national product, and we have to export 
a certain amount of products to other countries in order to back the strength of our economy and our dollar with labor. I don't I don't know why this is so difficult for men to understand, but there are currently 51 percent of the workforce is currently women. You know why? Because they go to work. And I hear men saying, oh, they're picking women. This is true. They're picking a lot of women to work because they're cheaper to hire than men and more dependable and more educated and more agreeable to work with. These are not problems of feminism. These are problems of the patriarchy. And y'all need to take it up with your brethren if you don't want women in the workplace. Well, they're going to want the top shelf guys, the guys that are tall, the guys that are attractive, the guys that make significantly more money than them. So since women are in a position where they make their own money, they have their own success, which is cool. I'm, I'm not against women working. But what I am saying is that feminism has caused some real issues between relationships. So he's saying that women are going to want the top tier men. Just as men want the top tier women. Uh, feminism didn't cause that problem. It's called natural selection. And because of natural selection, everyone always wants the best of everything. This is how they sell <laughs> soda. You know, it's called FOMO, fear of missing out. Um, everyone always thinks there's something a little better than what they're doing and what they're having. And that type of consumerism makes us all climb the ladder for something bigger and something better. But these are still problems of the patriarchy. Because as long as certain men are capitalizing off of other men, as long as there are men like Elon Musk who sit on a yacht while other men work for an hourly wage that's not even a, a living wage. Those are always going to be the men that have more access, not just to women, but resources than you. <laughs> Get mad because this guy has a yacht, not because he has all the women. Okay. Like this is the system, the, the class system that the patriarchy has created. And just so that you know, even if you move outside of America and you go to some of these other countries, you know, that, that men have been getting their passport and going to, the same is true. So you go to these other places because you're richer there than the men that are there, you know, and then you get. All the women. See, it's fine when it's working for you. <laughs> it's it's cool when they do it. It's a problem when I do it. So my whole thing is, these are problems of the patriarchy. How did feminism even get into this conversation? This is weird. Okay. If you don't want to have to compete with rich men for women, go eat the rich. Okay. Speak truth to power. Go get your money. Go storm the Capitol. Why? How are women involved in this? But if you go not even just outside of this country, but you go to different times, it's always been that way. If you go to my video where I talk about how marriage is a contract <laughs> between men, marriage was given to common men who would not have otherwise been able to afford a wife because the competition was unfair because the cons and the kings and the dukes and the marquis in certain areas would come through and take people's daughters and take people's wives if they wanted them. You know, marriage was something that was tied to a covenant with God so that men, other men would honor it. Okay. Because women have always been treated as property to be passed along. You can even look in the Bible when King Saul took his daughter Michael back or Michal. Yeah, took his daughter Michal back from David and gave her out to another man. You know, women have always been traded and bartered like <laughs> like livestock. Okay. So these this right here, women going to the most powerful men. It's a problem with the patriarchy you should uh yeah. Don't even know how <laughs> why we keep coming up in this stuff because now women only want men and since they only want men they want the best men what comes with the territory of dealing with the best men you're gonna have to share them because you becky Susie, every single girl wants that guy here's the thing women are sharing the worst men men are out on their worst behavior i'm on my worst behavior men are co-camping on different women's couches so this whole argument is um mute it's asinine it's redundant um, any woman who's having to share a man is because that man want to be shared, not because of feminism. 
So you're all competing for him. If a guy has 10 girls, is he gonna settle down one? More than likely, no. It's kind of funny. What feminism has done is it's inadvertently given all the power and leverage in the dating marketplace to, talk to a small percentage of men. Yeah, It's actually hurt women overall. <laughs> okay, so what they're trying to do is saddle feminism with all the problems that men have so that we will fix men's problems for them and then they can lay on the couch of our conquest and have women at no place. Um, I speak about... Feminism, misogyny, sexism in the context of racism, because for some odd reason, especially our men, you know, they don't want me to call them black anymore. So I won't. Men of my community, men who share with me a racial, cultural and ethnic community, they are increasingly putting the pressure and accountability for what has happened in our community on us and asking us to bend ourselves like pretzels, to bring them back into the community, to bring them back into a pristine, uh, submissive, conquered community that is waiting with wreaths and laurels to throw at their feet. And no one, no one has received that. His complaint about what feminism has done to women <laughs> um, is, is, is proving that point, which is that the power is in the hands of a small percentage of men. So if this percentage of men that are wielding this power that was given to them by feminism, how weird is this? How weird? Women, you put this small, this small percentage of rich, powerful men in the positions that they are. You do that. And if you would stop, now this is the only thing I agree with him on, if you would stop competing for those men. Now, when you stop competing, <laughs> don't, don't grab a bunch of uh, low-hanging fruit, uh, a, a, low, uh, a bunch of bottom feeders, okay? Don't get the shrimp off the bottom of the ocean either. But I do feel that the competition can't be between us. We need to make these men compete with each other. Since it's such a small percentage of these men that's wielding the power anyway, why don't y'all that's got so many problems and complaints get together and go fight the power? Fight the power! Fight the power! How about that? How about y'all do what they did in the French Revolution? And that was the French! Come on, man! Why don't y'all do that? Why don't y'all do what they did on Amistad and go ahead and overthrow them so that you can get not just your women back, but your resources back? Give us free. How about you do that and leave us women and us feminists out of it? And for the man, because I already heard it in the back of my mind that's going to say, well, we're not getting ready to do all that for women that we don't want. Okay. All right. I think that takes care of everything. So um, if you see what I see and you feel as I feel. But if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek. Go ahead and drop that fire. Headphones and emoji. I would love to hear what you have to say. I already know it's not a popular opinion that the patriarchy might actually be responsible for where we are. But women... If we don't start to take something off of the boat, the ship is going down. You know, there's only so much that we're going to be able to handle in keeping this community afloat. And the uh, gaslighting, blame shifting ways of narcissistic, entitled men, it's going to be too much for us to bear right now in this season where the dollar is collapsing, where we are all getting ready to be put <laughs> in a position that we've never seen in this country before. I need you to stay focused on getting those educations, buying that property wherever you can, taking care of these children and these elderly people. Somebody just asked my mom to take on taking care of an elderly person. Like my mom's not elderly, you know, like for us, they say that they're not going to show up the way we need them to for a group of women they don't want. Meanwhile, we showing up for a group of men that ain't even here.
So, baby, go ahead and brush that dust off your shoulders and, and, and don't even let this stuff sink into your skin. Let's go ahead and do what we know that we need to do as women and stop entertaining these these asinine. I have seen so many men devaluing and decimating women on these podcasts and they do it in the way that it's done. You know, I'm a great debater now. And so that's what you do. It's called the straw man argument where you don't give the person a viable a viable alternative to the issue that you set forward or you get a whole group of other people that agree with you so that now that person is taking on a a um echo chamber as opposed to it being really you guys presenting the argument and debating the point now you're debating personality politics and all desirability politics and all this dumb stuff that has nothing to do with the underlying issue which is that these men would rather vacate their community not only can they not find a black woman in a black community that they would be happy and satisfied with now they're talking about well the point of the passport bros do you even care why they're getting their passports and leaving Baby, thank you for showing everybody that it wasn't the black woman that was the problem. Because according to y'all, if they are American, whether they be black, white, Hispanic, Asian, foreign, or domestic, you don't want them because they're in America. So thank you. Thank you for making something that was just a community problem now an international issue. Because the same men that I just told y'all to take all that fight to, y'all are getting ready to be the small percentage of men that they're going to have to isolate and cut out like a cancer. OK, you're creating a, a minority for yourself and putting yourself in the most powerless position that you could possibly be in because you don't have a nation that you came from. You don't have what we call amnesty sovereignty you're not an ambassador because you're not coming from any country or any nation that recognizes you until you come back and you build this community until you do right by me everything you even think about gonna fail until you have a home base until you can show people your value and your worth to your community you're gonna stay dispensable you're going to stay disposable in the same way you told us not to ask you for your help. Don't ask us for ours until the next episode. Y'all can go ahead and clock out for me. The war is still coming, Charles, and I intend to fight it by any means necessary.